existing home sales month over month was a big miss. We got a down 7.7% when we were expecting up 2%. That was bad. And the Bank of America, they're confirming my theory of a long landing. They call it no landing, but just basically saying that it's higher rates for longer. And now we've got ourselves into a pickle. We've got uh, just the man to get us out of this pickle. Please welcome to the show, Keith Fitzgerald. Keith, this doesn't look like, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of problems everywhere. And I'll say, I'll just kick it off like this and I'll hand it over to you. I don't like how I feel right now when we've got our strategic oil reserve at 1983 levels with a lot more people in this country now than we had back then, number one. Number two is we're having a difficult time recruiting for our armed forces. Uh, number three is we have an open border. What, what could be coming in? down there, Trojan horse-like, that makes me concerned. I mean, we're just not coming from a, a, good, a good strength. I feel like we're lurching from one lily pad to the other, just hoping to stay out of the water. You know, that's a really interesting analogy. I'm going to have to borrow that. My great-grandfather had a very simple saying every time he saw stuff like this. He, he would just look at me and go, you know, what part of the picture do they not understand other than the whole picture? Right. I just think the economic lunacy, illiteracy, the political gamesmanship, I've just, like many Americans, had enough, Scott. This is just stupid. It makes my head explode to watch America get put through this because nobody in America signed up for it. It's a white knuckle ride that none of us deserve. And yet politicians are not doing a dang thing about on either side of the aisle to really serve the people. This is government at the people. And it just seems like a slow motion car wreck. Like we, we can make this exactly. stop, but we just don't want to for some reason. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I, it's hard for me to have that nefarious of, a, of an outlook on things, but there are things that we can do to to where there's a lot of things we could have done never to have a, a you know a problem in, in with Russia Ukraine in the first place, uh, but now here we sit with these markets worried about where we're going to be going next. We've got the uh, Fed that still wants to raise interest rates, maybe three more quarter point hikes this year so far, uh, that would put us at 11 in total since last March. If that's the case, uh, an economy that depending on where you look from one day to the next looks to be faltering with a stretched consumer, and then you add in everything I just said about the geopolitics. <laughs> Tell me where the happiness is, Keith. Make me smile. <laughs> All right. Well, I will do my best. This is like playing catch with somebody who isn't there to get the ball. But here's the <laughs> thing, right? And I learned this out on the farms and the ranches, just like you did. The cows still got to get fed. The medicine still got to do. You got to turn the crops. You got to do all these other things. So there are little things you can do every single day to move your life forward. I personally am going to operate on the assumption the sun will come up tomorrow. Cooler heads will prevail. And somewhere down the line, I'm going to live life the way I want to and make it a better place. So, you know, you can worry about stuff you can't control and you can control a whole lot in your life. There's reasons to be thankful. I think about those things every day. I look at the markets. They're a train wreck, but I'm still going on the hunt because there's still great companies with great people and great resiliency in this country. And no matter how bad the chips get, Scott, I'm not betting against it. So are these uh, interest rates that have gone through the roof in the short end? We talked about a, a yield curve where we've got short-term interest rates much higher than long-term interest rates. I mean, you can get, you know, one year, you can get, get, you know, darn near 5% on one year paper now. I mean, that's starting to be something that could really compete with stocks, don't you think? Well, I do think so. And, you know, so the question, right, is, is you want the return of your money, not necessarily return on your money. And if everybody's uncertain and everybody is unsettled, that is normally a counterintuitive bullish sign. So it takes guts. It's uncomfortable. It's scary. All of those emotions come into play. But the situation people have forgotten about is this is much like coming out of World War II, much like it was in 1979. We had inflation raging. We had jobs going the wrong direction. We had a government that was out of control. We had debt at all-time highs. We had rising rates. I mean, you could just go right down the laundry list. So we've seen this playbook before. We've just forgotten how uncomfortable it is. There is a way through it. So are you parking money anywhere specific or any sectors or in, in bonds? I mean, what is it? What is your general thought right here on how to kind of weather this storm for the next? This could be an 18-month ordeal, maybe longer. Well, I think so. And you look to some of the names that you and I talk about all the time. Defense is a logical one. Lockheed Martin is a holding of mine. It's on the move today for obvious reasons, given the geopolitics. You look at a company like General Mills, for example, which just up guidance. So that's a great example. A company like Pepsi, for example, which I don't own, you know, they're still putting numbers up. Apple, Microsoft, there are still great companies out there, even if the broader market comes under pressure. Dividends are where you can really make an impact right now right. because buying into the down days, re investing is how you boost profits and reduce risk. People don't think about that. Well, I mean, there's one thing that is for sure. And if we thought uh, 
all these interest rate hikes, you know, eight of them so far, Keith, since we started last March, have only brought down CPI from 9.1 to 6.4. That's 2.7 percent of my book. It's going to be a pretty long <laughs> slog here to see if we can get 6.4 down to two, right? Well, the Fed doesn't understand what it's doing, number one. I mean, I've maintained that from the beginning. They're as wrong about rates and labor as they were about transitory. I think come June, they're going to be in a spot where they just may, Scott, have to recognize and admit that they were wrong again. Now, that doesn't do us a whole heck of a lot of good, but if we invest in companies in the meantime that we know are putting numbers up, that are comparatively defensive, we can still use this to our advantage. All right. Awesome stuff as usual, Keith. Thank you very much for being on the show. Hi, it's Keith here. Thanks for checking out today's highlight clip. What'd you think? Did I make sense? Is there something you'd like to add? Make sure you leave a comment down below and of course, click subscribe to keep up right here on YouTube or sign up for the email newsletter at the link below. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram for my real-time thoughts on markets, analysis, and a whole lot more.